the result of a quick uh, poll, we uh, asked you to respond in emails, which different formats of uh, online learning training uh, you are mostly interested. If you yet didn't respond, you can have a chance to do. I posted the link in Menti. Uh, when preparing for today's webinar, we kind of identify several types of formats, which uh, we know from uh, used in, uh, in, in the field, in, uh, uh, youth work, international work, uh, non-formal learning, that's the field we are looking at. Of course, there are more other formats and fields, but we were curious to see what's available on, on the HOP platform and what, what we know. So it looks like that uh, uh, formats which mostly interest you is blended and standalone facilitated uh, courses for pre-selected groups. Uh, to some extent, we thought that that's usual formats in residential, plus now we can have online learning uh, opportunities or we start thinking about them, so perhaps that's the reason. Uh, so what we will do today, we will uh, uh, showcase a couple of examples uh, in a study visit to HOP platform, but uh, before going to this one, uh, I would like to invite uh, Michael to share a bit the framework of uh, online courses, which we invite you to later use and refer whenever you reflect about the uh, particular course uh, example and so on. So please, Michael, explain a bit uh, how, how we can use the, the framework to think about online courses, especially hosted on uh, Moodle. <clears throat> I mean, well, uh, framework is a very big word. I mean, this is kind of maybe one perspective uh, you can uh, take if you are looking at uh, online courses. And we chose to, to look uh, from this perspective and uh, maybe it's also uh, a good starting point to think about when you would like to put a course online to develop something, to create something. Um, to maybe start with this uh, perspective. So the, the question is kind of what interactions would you really would like to have? Yeah. So when you have the learner here, and of course you have your topic and content and you have, uh, you have a lot of interactions between the learner and the content. Yeah. So this is the kind of diving into a topic, exploring it, learning something, then reflecting about this topic. You have also a line to maybe other learners, yeah? So discussing, sharing things, yeah? So we have the social part of learning actually and the, the kind of, uh, let's say, growing learners community on the way if you are ready and brave enough to share and discuss more and more things yeah. during the course, yeah? So that's one thing. You have the course facilitator a little bit outside. You could also draw a line to the learner but also to the content and also to the learners community. And you have still a line from the learner maybe to his or her local context, yeah? And I think there's also this kind of, uh, there is an interaction maybe to the local context, yeah? For example, in a course with uh, about uh, solidarity projects, we, before they started to write on their concept and develop their idea, we asked them to go to their local context and made a need analysis, make interviews with people about the problems and, and coming with these interviews back to the online course and then work with it. Yeah. So this is, I think, very much also an advantage kind of a, an online course has in that, in that moment. Um, what we would like to, uh, to point out here that kind of Moodle, like a, a learning management system, the strong side of Moodle is here, really like between the learner and the topic. And a lot of activities and resources um, are really kind of working to strengthen this, this, this kind of relationship or this interaction, which means it's kind of you're deepening kind of the relationship between the learner and the content. Yeah, you have activities or functionalities which are kind of deepening the learning with the topic. Yeah, and the course facilitator is kind of there also to to learn. A little bit a weaker point. I mean, it's also there. You have a forum. You have also kind of activities where you can have like you can co-create content together with a learners community. Um, you have it, but it's much weaker in Moodle. Yeah. Yeah, so you have to keep in mind if you're using HOP as an online learning platform, it's kind of the strengths are here, 
Uh, but if you want to establish a strong community of learners, of young people helping one another and sharing and discussing things and deepening their learning, then you have to work and think of something sometimes additionally to hop. Yeah, and we will talk, we will talk a little bit about this. So this is the invitation for now is kind of to keep this a little bit in, in mind when we are going now into the smaller groups and looking in the different examples, because uh, under this, just under this perspective, you could also kind of also just uh, talk a little bit about the courses uh, we would like to present. Yeah. So the Welcome to Hope course that maybe you know, because it's uh, open and uh, when you are registering into Hope platform, then maybe you are encouraged to discover this one. It was created uh, in the very beginning of the platform as an intro course to show uh, like a little bit uh, what are what is the experience at the platform. And when we are joining, uh, when we used to be joining residential activities, training seminars and stuff, then uh, talking about hope, it would be also very handy to propose people to beside listening to what are the you know, objectives and the, 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 the idea that they can also experience themselves. So at my seminars, people will just take the mobile and spend this half an hour with this Welcome to Hope course. Uh, every, all the courses that are available on this, on the Hope platform are here under the courses. Uh, I, think you I think you realize but uh, most of them are closed for the pre-selected groups. So you cannot join them because you need to know the password. And that's uh, how, at least for now, the um, national agencies mostly decide to have them. I think this comes from the fact that the pandemic, when the pandemic hit, uh, we were all looking for a way to substitute the residential activities. And we were so much used to have a pre-selected groups of 25, 30 participants that this also turned into online. Uh, but of course, online allows, online learning allows for uh, uh, much bigger groups and for different ways uh, to uh, deal with the content. So every course has this uh, en enrollment page where uh, creators uh, can describe a bit, advertise a bit uh, what is the course about. It has this human friendly link, uh, which can be shared also in social media. Uh, and then it looks good because then this picture, uh, the teaser picture and the text, the beginning of the text goes into a post to Facebook and uh, other social media. Mm, okay. Uh, it, uh, this uh, short one is made of uh, three activities, or four activities, uh, and uh, as we are starting this study visit, maybe I will tell you a bit of the technicalities, because later you can just focus on the contents of the course and the, the concept of the online learning they took in the other courses. So the HOP platform is based uh, on uh, building the courses uh, by activities and resources. So there is a list of about, for now, about 20 few activities and resources that can be uh, used uh, to present the content or uh, involve participants. Uh, this one is in, uh, using four, as you can see. Uh, this one is called page. Uh, and the page is a page, like a website page, so it can include text or uh, multimedia, uh, pictures, video, and so on. This one is a forum where people can uh, uh, interact, can post, uh, can answer to questions, uh, can also communicate between themselves. This one is assignment. When uh, you, as a creator of a course, you um, uh, prepare a task and you ask people to do the task. It can be either in online reality, uh, it can be also in, in the platform, but can be also a task for uh, local reality of your participants. So you can send your participants to meet real people around, do a task that you plan and bring the outcome into the platform. And the last one here is uh, interactive content, uh, which allows for more 
kind of uh, uh, different ways the quizzes, the games can be included. So it's very useful when you want to check the learning of participants, but not necessarily through a regular quiz when you are having, you know, just a question and few answers. This interactive uh, content allows uh, for more dynamic and more user-friendly maybe uh, way to, 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 ch to check the learning. Mm, I will show you how the forum looks like. Well, forum is a forum, of course, and as a creator of the course, in case you like, you can also define different permissions. This forum is a regular forum. Uh, every learner in the course can come, actually needs to come and needs to post here uh, in the forum. There's already plenty of posts because in case you do not post into the forum, then you cannot uh, you cannot uh, fulfill the course. That's the, that's the task to contribute to the forum. And the question here is to upload a photo, a very simple. Uh, so it's a photos of uh, fans of e-learning, uh, different colleagues at different situations, funny photos. Uh, uh, and after a learner, a participant uploaded a photo, uh, then this uh, activity, uh, the forum activity becomes uh, green here, right? Fulfilled. Uh, the page, as I said, uh, was about uh, text. Uh, uh, could be also photos and videos. And this one uh, for learners is open to confirm. So this is a user, a learner confirms, I have fulfilled this. This one, the person needs to post into the forum. Uh, this assignment uh, asks a person to go and create a description uh, at the Hope platform of a, a create own profile, upload a picture, write a few words about uh, herself, himself. Uh, and here we have played a bit because the regular assignment could be like this. Uh, go somewhere, do something and come back and tell what was the experience or just confirm that you have done it. Of course, as a creator, you can define also different ways how this can be checked. It can be more school-like with the scale, giving grades or points or whatever. It can be more based on the feedback uh, reflection uh, with participants. And here actually we use even different approach. It's uh, quite often used uh, called as a flipped learning. So actually the confirmation that the person created own profile and put this description also is in hands of the other learners. So if, if you have done your profile, you need to find another learner in the course to do this assessment and say, yes, you did a great profile, great job. Uh, so it's self-managed by learners in the course. Here. And the last one, uh, this interactive here. Mm, uh, yeah. For example, here it's about, uh, you know, uh, joining the, joining the proper elements if you think it's like that you just click check and then you know that everything i did was wrong but of course if we would do better then we can retry and maybe we will be better right i will not play with this anymore but you get the point. There is plenty of this interactive uh, contents. Um, just let me see you because I had closed this. Uh, but also as a sign, as you see, I, I didn't pass this one. Um, after a person went through all this four, the, per, the learner can be recognized for fulfilling the course or completing the course. Uh, in here, uh, it's a learning batch. So as you can see, there are badges offered, one badge. So when the learner went through the four activities, uh, gets a badge to recognize the learning. It could be also that the person gets automatic certificate, for example. So you, as a creator, you prepare beforehand a layout for a um, uh, certificate, and then uh, it comes to an email of a learner with a name and so on. You have any questions about this welcome to COP? Maybe here I still add the, the, the comments that it's also based on this concept of micro learning. 
because I, I observe we tend to think of online courses like big books, like you know having chapters, modules, uh, big Bibles, big encyclopedia things. But actually, you know, we are all still quite much uh, dynamic, moving, and having a shorter span of time to invest. And micro learning, having little courses, very specific, is also very often uh, fulfilling the needs of the learners, uh, uh, especially when it's adopted to a mobile phone. Uh, when it looks good on the mobile phone, when you create your course, that's what I do. I would always have my mobile phone next to me and I will be checking if the contents I'm preparing looks good also in, in terms of a size, picture and so on. Because you can imagine, you can have a nice graph, but when it's a mobile phone, it might be invisible because it's too small screen. Uh, so in this terms, uh, it makes sense to check and create this kind of uh, accessible based on micro learning. I have a second one to show you, but maybe you have some question on this. Uh, yes, hello, uh, Sophie from yeah, uh, Belgium. Um, I, I am wondering if is this hop is this uh, like free software, and in in what sector is it used, or did you as uh, Salto develop it? It's not clear for me. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I mean, um, our hop platform is based on Moodle, but of course, uh, it has been uh, adopted to our needs. It, actually, it was quite much uh, cleaned from most of functionalities because Moodle, in principle, is for schools and universities, and there is plenty of functions for teachers. We had uh, rename many terms here, so not to have teachers, students, uh, grades, and this kind of things. Um, but after all these investments, uh, it's our youth work, European youth work platform. And we are uh, aiming to have courses coming from the national agencies, first of all. So the national agencies having the TCA or net budgets, uh, they could, uh, of course, invest into residential activities, but we also encourage to additionally think of online learning, Sometimes also as a blended, you know, you're offering something online to your participants and only after they meet for residential or purely online uh, courses here. Recently, we also opened for consortium of organizations uh, doing Key Action 2 and Key Action 3 projects. So they can also come to the platform and make use of it. Uh, and it's for free. But in case you are coming with your team to organize, to create a course ad hoc. Uh, for the first time, we always encourage to add a few hundreds of euro into your budget and uh, uh, involve one of these HOP Council members because then they are experienced with the platform and it really goes much easier when you can ask this, all these technical issues and get some consultancy from them. Uh, yeah, but there is no price to host your course here. OK, thank you. I'm not following chat. If you write to me, uh, can be okay. I see now the chat. Can it be uh, designated to in different languages? Uh, we have experience of courses in Polish and Greek. Uh, and in case of Greek course, uh, they were fine if the interface is in English. And in case of Polish course, they asked if it's possible to have the interface in Polish. And we have now the platform is possible to interact in English or in Polish. Uh, if we see there is a bigger number of courses coming from other NAs uh, wishing to have other languages, this is possible. This is actually the value of uh, open source Moodle because it's offering uh, a lot of plugins, including language translations. Tomek? Yeah. Oh, it's Eleni from Greece. Um, yeah. I know Hope because I have participated in three or four online courses by chosen by uh, my NA. Mm -hmm. But um, if I have prepared the course, I mean, like Eleni with my team, yeah. and I want to upload it to Hope All Learning, to Hope Platform, is it necessary to be approved by NA or by Salto? Yeah, it needs to be either a project of national agency, so yeah. it, in their budget, TCA in their budget, or uh, it can be also if it's a project uh, granted in Key Action 2 or Key Action 3. But if, it, if I'm um, 
a trainer of NA. What about this? Yeah, then it's easier to talk to your NA and propose ah, to them to, to, yeah. okay. to propose them to include your idea into the DCA budget. Uh -huh. Because a regular online course also requires budget. I mean, a creators, yeah, of, of course, course, but very often also multimedia, some graphics, layout things cost money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's important if there is the sponsor, NA or uh, Key Action 2, Key Action 3 project behind. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. I've got one question as well, if I may. Sure. Uh, sure. So you mentioned this uh, hope platform uh, support, and we can include a budget for them, but how do we find them? Uh, is mm. there, yeah, but, you, okay, you're still I'm following, to, but uh, uh, I don't okay. You're still following here, right? So, here yeah. at the tools, we have this uh, hop online learning, right? Yeah, uh, and we have the council. I will show you hop council, oh. hop and council. here we name the people on the mm -hmm. right hand uh, but of course you can always write to hop at salto uh, and if you need the support to contact with one of them uh, i can always uh, help with the i see very familiar names oh. <laughs> yeah i'm sure in our community you you know it's plenty of people okay so and then i can uh, approach these people and uh, so how many days uh, do you think it's uh, good to add like one i mean the the, the unit day yeah sure i was uh, talking with some of them who already did this kind of mentoring support and they were saying yeah if we are contracted for about 8 10 hours so yeah. let's say one working day then this is uh, quite uh, uh, minimum enough huh? Because then it can mm -hmm. be split into, let's say, four meetings of two hours. Uh, and then they were saying this as minimum is fine. But of course, it depends on your budget and also of your needs. Uh, you can involve them for two, three days, but split it uh, throughout the course so you have the support in different moments. Perfect. Thank you. And of course, I mean, they are freelance, so you just agree with them how much you need to pay. If you can convince them not to pay, that's also fine with me. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry. Another question. <laughs> sorry, it's all new. Um, yeah. How how much is it? Uh, is this platform known already in the European uh, youth field? How many courses? Maybe you know how how many different uh, participants you had so far? Yeah. So uh, of course the pandemic was a, a context which helped in this regard because we observed uh, a lot more interest into online learning, uh, more institutions coming with the courses and more participants. Last year, there was 35, around 35 courses, uh, new courses that have been implemented at the platform in 2020. And there was about three and a half thousand learners. But the big number of learners comes through a MOOCs. That's the massive open online courses. We have two this big ones. Uh, this one about uh, Solidarity Core in general, uh, which is having, I think, 1,700 learners included. And the Youth Pass uh, MOOC, a uh, few hundred uh, learners. Um, the other ones, uh, some of them are for 30 people, closed group, uh, nobody else can join, but the MOOCs in principle are open. Yeah. And how much is recognized? Uh, yeah, it depends uh, if it's from the perspective of the learners or perspective of creators. We at uh, in our place, we promote it uh, more. We look for promotion or we put efforts into promoting the platform among the national agencies as the space for the courses. Uh, because then uh, the promotion for each of the course is made by the owner, right? So if the national agency was creating their own course about the topic, then they take care of promoting it uh, around the youth work community in Europe. Is it possible to create a learning path like that? Um, it's not up, um, up to individual to tick the boxes what they did, but to have like a preset path in which they, like when you do one step, and the system recognizes it, you can do the next step and so on. Yeah, so each of these elements can be restricted. So as you see, for example, this one is restricted. So it's not available until you do these three previous ones, right? 
of course you are seeing the course a bit as a um, facilitator now so you see everything but if we change the view let's check uh, we can simulate if i'm a learner so if i would be a learner here still yeah still you know that you cannot do this activity you cannot enter this activity you see there's even no a circle here before you do these previous ones so you can create a path you can create a linear uh, learning experience yeah. yes mina i do not see you yes. but Yes, yes, I would like to ask you uh, how we can uh, know the different tool, what we can use with HOP. Because, for example, you, you share with us the, the tools with a select a photo with logo, and you have different tools, but how you can find that? How you we can the, know the different tools we can use? You mean this, like if it's a page or a forum and so on, right? Yes, but where are you find that? Yeah, so let's say... Let's say you are a creator of the course, you are a trainer, so you start with a blank, you have nothing here. So what you would do first, you would turn editing on. Uh, yeah. And then just imagine it's blank because now mm -hmm. we are in the course already. But then you have this add an activity or resource. Mm -hmm. Add activity or resource. And you have this list of all possible activities that you can make use of. Uh okay and there is always this little uh, instruction here okay super uh, but what i usually do this instruction sometimes it's not enough or maybe it's not um, it's not really clear for me what i can do with it i would just go to google and would put like database moodle activity and then there is this moodle documentation So I would like to present you two very different courses. One is Youth Pass Hardcore, uh, and another one is uh, the Hop course, um, which is about planning, creating, and publishing online courses. Um, so this one is just also to to show you a little bit the the contrast of what is what is possible. So the Youth Pass Hardcore, if you come to the side, it looks like this. Um, so it's another another way how to to organize the content, and I think it's kind of when you come as a learner uh, the first moment on a platform and you enter a course, you you need to think about kind of how how this is structured. It is is it easily kind of um, kind of uh, catchable? Is it overwhelming? Is it too much? So basically, you have here a button system, and uh, because if this would be all open or accessible. It would be would be a hell of a, a lot content was kind of oh no 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 I'm going going immediately again so when you come it's really like you see these three things and you see actually only only these uh, short descriptions uh, of every module yeah and then week by week there will be one one thing opened so this is kind of it's a, it's a course which is it's about facilitating learning it's about youth pass and it's about with within the context of uh, European Solidarity Corps. And um, it's 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 about uh, it's with small numbers and big numbers. It's kind of uh, I can say this: uh, we opened uh, in December, and uh, we had three hundred eighty participants. Um, but you have to see for MOOCs, so for the so-called these kind of massive open online courses, kind of you have around kind of one hundred active people. Yeah. So this is the kind of you have to to see kind of two hundred eighty people of these people who enrolled never went over the first chapter yeah they were kind of enrolled had a look went out <laughs> yeah just stayed as the, the as the name there yeah and then from these 100 active people you have to see the kind of 20 people kind of uh, finished 80 to 100 percent of the course yeah uh, another 20 people kind of 60 to 80 percent of the course so you have kind of 40 people who kind of finalized the course and did more than 60 or 80 percent of the course content yeah so this is also kind of having a little bit the relation for these online courses who are kind of targeting big numbers that's quite normal so it's kind of it's about a little bit more than 10 percent which is kind of uh, finishing and finalizing the online course yeah 
Um, it worked also as a, it works now at the moment, it's open as a standalone course. So it's kind of, you can go there on your own through the course and it will be fine. You, you just can't use the forum activities, uh, but you can do the activities for yourself and you have access to the content. Um, and uh, we have uh, uh, used it as a facilitated version. For the facilitated version, we, we basically, okay, we had the forums uh, open, but we had also a small structure of uh, four online meetings, uh, which were one hour long, which were covering some additional topics, which we couldn't cover anymore in the course. So one was about tools and questions. Another one was facilitating learning from a distance, surviving difficult conversations. And another one was about rituals, how to close the learning support. Yeah? So this is, so these were uh, live events. I think the, the interesting thing about these uh, facilitating that with a very minimal, minimum kind of effort, and it was only kind of four additional one hour meetings, um, we had an effect on, on this kind of, I would say, even on these 20 participants who finished 80 to 100 percent, because uh, three third of the people who were on the, on, on the live events, they were really also the people who finished in the end. Yeah? And they were really kind of the regular people to come to this, this, these live, live events. Um, so this course, it's, it's really about, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, content. Um, we had, uh, fortunately, we had, we had uh, different budgets, but what we also produced were a lot of videos where we, where we put ourselves as trainers. We do, did a recording and uh, uh, because we had the impression or we, we agreed on this, that it's for us also important to, to put ourselves as trainers and facilitators some, somehow visible into this course. And not only just kind of writing as we are the course facilitators and put a picture next to it, but also in a video where they can see us act and, uh, and behave and, uh, and, and do, do, do things. Yeah? Um, we had um, also, let's say kind of ex an external uh, company who were doing all the illustrations. So we had really a kind of a one line of uh, graphic illustrations throughout the course. And, and also they were, they were in the end uh, producing, well, for each, I think for each module kind of minimum one, one video, which was kind of this kind of whiteboard uh, style uh, 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 videos. So this was about, about one course. I maybe I stop up for a moment and ask you if you have uh, now would like to ask something about this course. Hi, I start, uh, Lithuania. Um, I just want to kind of clarify. So the module is only open, like, um, I mean, the content is only open if you enrolled in a course. You cannot just scroll scroll around and, and read bits and pieces from the course. You have to kind of enroll in a course and then fill it. And when you go, if step by step, then you will open up the modules. Am I correct? I just want to clarify that. Yeah, this is kind of, uh, if you want to access a course on HOP, you need to have an account and then you have to enroll in, in the courses. And some are open and some are really only kind of uh, period by period. If you enroll in You've Passed Hardcore now, you see all the modules open and you can go pick here and there. Yeah. If we do probably another facilitated version, we make a, a, a certain starting point, we define a certain starting point, and then you start going through the course with a group. And then we will kind of time the content and say kind of every week we open one module and there will be a, maybe a certain, uh, a certain kind of uh, life events for it. Yeah? So this is kind of two courses in one, yeah? Okay, thank you. So the other one is, uh, is this one. So it's kind of a uh, hop plan, create and publish your first online course. Um, so this course, uh, well, actually it, it's, it's also two courses uh, in one. 
So it's uh, possible to kind of do it on your own. And, uh, and I think um, Tomek already uh, explained a little bit uh, how, how it works. So if you have an idea for a course you would like to develop and put on the hop platform, uh, and you have the support of the national agency or from Salto, or you are part of a key action two project, um, then you contact Tomic and you would kind of offer the space uh, place and you can enroll in this course and can go through this course on your own. You can see here a little bit uh, the structure. It's a little bit uh, differently uh, organized. So it's just kind of different boards. One, one picture here, you have different chapters of one module, uh, but you go really kind of introduction to online learning, then you're going through planning, then you're going through the step of creating course creation and then publishing, putting it on hop and, uh, and you have, uh, and then maybe some, some, okay, launch course launching, some recommendation and summing it up. And you have a lot of resources there, yeah? So you can, for example, to go alone or together with your team uh, through this course. Uh, the second is it's also a group for a very small number for kind of, uh, we made a selection for 25 people uh, who are part of the crash course in this, this year. And they go through the process of this course uh, on one side to bring their idea forward. This is one part of the course. And the other part of the course is let's say kind of a series also of live events. So this is also where we think, um, um, and it looks like this. So here on the left side, you have the live events. On the right side, you have the, let's say, kind of the course. Yeah? And the live events, we have here 10 different live events. So we have an onboarding, a getting to know one another uh, uh, um, live event. We have the free webinars. And this is one webinar part of this process, which is opened also for a bigger audience. Uh, and there will be another one about non-formal learning online and about facilitation. Then we have uh, meetups, which is more like kind of, uh, so what is the progress? Um, what is the next module? What is it about? Kind of discussing kind of steps and uh, having some, some in, input uh, there in, in, in five different meetings. And we have an evaluation meeting in, in, in May. So this is all the live events. These are the 10 live events. And we have here the, the online course on HOP, which I showed you just right now. And we have, uh, let's say, kind of the, the course creation process, like the people who are in small groups trying to develop a little bit of their course idea or try different things out on, on the HOP platform and play a little bit around how they can design a module uh, or an educa educational path or learning uh, activity. And we have some mentoring here also included where we give, we give support to these individual uh, and teams to bring the idea forward. So what I, what I wanted to say is kind of, um, this is also stressing, it's not only what I showed in the beginning, the interaction between the learner and the content, because the interaction between the learner and the content, you have here the online course. But if you go for it with, uh, let's say kind of a group of learners, and you would like to also focus a little bit this aspect of social learning and learning from one another and interacting and helping one another. And maybe, I don't know, uh, also going in direction of project work with people who work together, who collaborate together, then you need also an additional structure. So hop platform having an online course is one structure. And what I showed you this structure of live events uh, on Zoom, which has a certain sequence a regularity is another structure. So this is the, the in some cases um, this digital youth work can inadvertently create the uh, additional barriers. And especially when I think about the young people that I work uh, with in Berlin, this could be the case. I've just noticed that uh, firstly it assumes uh, two two things that um, the participants can speak English. Um, if we're designing these hop courses, then um, to what extent, in your experience, are they multilingual or is it possible for, for them to be multilingual? And another thing is that it assumes that the participants are also literate. And again, with the youngsters that I work with, this is not always an assumption that you can make that they either can understand English or, or read it. 
So it's just one thing to know if you could share some of your experience here and how we can deliver these courses for participants who potentially don't have these competences yet. Right. So this is a very good question and very relevant. Uh, the platform itself uh, serves to the online courses coming first of all from the national agencies. They have this TCA net budgets uh, and uh, then involving external experts, they create courses at the platform and the target group of TCA and uh, net activities is in really mostly it's the uh, youth workers, youth trainers, youth facilitators. It's not young people themselves. So it's building the capacity of the youth work uh, professionals, let's say. Okay. But uh, recently, we are also open for the courses coming from Key Action 2 and Key Action 3 consortiums of Erasmus+. Plus. So when they are involving online uh, courses in their projects, uh, we are also offering space ad hoc uh, for them to, to bring the course in. Uh, but again, uh, this could be also targeting youngsters, but often is also targeting youth trainers, uh, facilitators, youth workers, and so on. Um, when it comes to languages, uh, the interface now is in English, uh, but it's also having this uh, Polish version now. It was more an experiment we did time ago with the Polish National Agency. They hosted a course in Polish language, and we also made sure that the interface is in Polish. Mm, and it worked fine. Uh, it requires a bit of work of translating again the terminology uh, because the Moodle starts always with the teachers, students, and all this school uh, terminology. In English, this has been already adopted. So in Polish, we were adopting. I think in Polish, in Polish, it was uh, for the young people themselves. It was for those who were interested in uh, strategic partnership. Uh, in that, sorry, in. Uh, um, uh, uh, solidarity projects, uh, as far as I remember, so it, they, they might have been young people as well. Yeah, it could be, could be. Yeah, yeah, so there are courses where the young people are participants, but mostly they are still the youth workers, which I do, do not really think that th that's a big difference yeah, in the end. Um, if, if we would have uh, more demand to have other uh, languages uh, as interface, uh, we can add them. That's this beauty of uh, Moodle and open source, uh, that there's plenty of plugins developed by the Moodle community. So in case we want to add languages here, it's possible. Uh, but of course, to an extent, uh, because the TCA net budget in principle is aiming at international cooperation and supporting international cooperation. I can imagine there are languages which on international level still works, uh, which is totally fine, uh, but it will be challenging if you want to have all the European Union languages in here. But if there is plenty of courses coming from, I don't know, Iceland, so of course we can also have Icelandic, maybe more um, unusual, but uh, if there is plenty of content from these partners, national agency organizations, why not? And But we have also these courses, I can show you. Um, there's a course in Greek. Let us find it. So they are having it for the, ah, here it is. They're having it for the beneficiaries of uh, the uh, Erasmus, I think. So after each round, when they grant uh, projects, they invite organizations that need to sign the contract to come to this course. Uh, so they have a good smooth start with the program. And as you can see, even the description is in Greek. We can have a look there, spying a bit. Um, so yeah, they are using this theme of uh, temp of uh, I think it's grid code. So instead of having a list of activities, it's uh, grouped by uh, columns, and you can predefine here. It's two columns, as you can see, and there will be maybe more on the bottom. Two columns, but you can define three or more. But everything is in Greek. It's just that interface is in English. Yeah. Okay, so I want to show you still this one. Uh, this is uh, this course is meant for young people. Also to have this example, because uh, as a regional salto, we are quite often in need of introducing the region to your participants, especially of volunteering service. Uh, we, as a regional salto, we are uh, responsible for on arrivals of uh, volunteers in the region. 
uh, and uh, online can support us in this regard. So if there, is, if there are volunteers coming to Ukraine, they can learn about the country even before they go for their project uh, through a course here. But also, of course, for youth exchanges and so on. Um, it's uh, using a different format here, which allows you to group chapters into uh, smaller parts. So it's divided to, let's close this one. It's divided into five chapters. And under each chapter, if you open, you have the elements. Yeah, of course, there's more elements uh, comparing to Welcome to Hope. Uh, there are different ones. I can show you maybe again this interactive. This one is about the map, uh, introducing Ukraine on the map, and also the regions, the historical regions of the country. So out beside the picture and text, I mean, explaining things, there's also this way how this can be explained in interactive form maybe more more dynamic again more colorful more engaging and motivating to really go through and uh, i have a question if, yeah. uh, uh, because i understand that for example now this course uh, is closed right because mm -hmm. uh, it's already taken place and uh, what if you would like to 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 reopen it like to make a second uh, make it second for a second time and then you can uh, like, let's say copy the whole content and to make a second edition uh, or... yeah sure actually actually this one was developed uh, not for the closed group uh, so there was no period of time when there was a group of people learning because mm -hmm. it is being developed as an open course it's just not open yet Ah, okay, uh, I would like to say because I would like to learn more about Ukraine, so that's why I was thinking. But one. now we will be also working with Helen, who is in the group in here. Uh, we will be working together on a parallel course on Armenia, and then we will launch them, we will make them public, and they will be just simply accessible without any enrollment keys or yeah, passwords. That's true. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if you would like to make for the closed group the second time, then there is a possibility to duplicate it or sure copy. sure yeah that's quite quite usual uh, sometimes the teams are developing the course for closed group and uh, then when it's finished uh, we are putting it uh, high hidden so the trainers can still work on the content but the learners are not having the access anymore and then again at certain date for the new group of learners it's reopened Oh, okay. or, or a second option is that sometimes they invest, the Greek National Agency did it with plenty of courses, and I appreciate a lot, after a month with 30 participants, let's say, when this was finished, uh, all the process with the group was finished, the course was changed a bit into self-paced, so anybody can come without any password and go through the elements, managing good learning uh, herself or himself. But of course, this requires a bit of uh, reshaping the course mm -hmm. to make sure it's possible for self-managing. Thank you. Yeah. And I think that's also one of the approaches we have in hope to bit internationalize the online learning offer coming from the national agencies and organizations. Because we observed this uh, also here in Polish National Agency, they were involved into online learning already for plenty of years, uh, but of course their focus would be the Polish organizations and the Polish youth workers and so on. But a lot of this content, if just translated into English and other languages, could be useful everywhere. And why to recreate a wheel and you know create uh, similar contents by each of the NAs and uh, organizations? We hope that hope can allow for more synergy in this. Yeah, and uh, here, for example, as another example of an activity, it's a book. So it's a kind of a set of uh, pages. So uh, instead of a long page that maybe you will need to scroll down, uh, it is divided into these chapters. You can see on the right hand ta table of contents. Uh, so it's more like reading through uh, a book, uh, re reading through small uh, contents, which is much more accessible also on the mobile phone. Eh? 
I was telling, I'm always telling, whenever I'm developing a course here at Hop, I have it also open at my phone. And then I'm looking and checking if this is still readable and still looks good, especially when it comes to graphic elements. Sometimes I see colleagues are uploading very nice uh, graphs and illustrations that should explain a concept which on the big screen, okay, the letters there are uh, fine, but when you open it with the mobile, it's just blurry and you do not really see the content. So all, I think it, it's worth to always check if it's still a mobile friendly content. And having it short, like the book allows to have this short page by page, chapter by chapter, is also much more accessible than. Um, that's a course about uh, solidarity projects, and it's a blended course. It's also for small numbers. And uh, before that, it's a, it's a seminar about like a four or five day training for young people who would like to organize a solidarity project. Um, so, and usually we had these training courses uh, for solidarity pro uh, projects like standalone, like residential only. And the last part of these training courses was always this kind of, okay, now you have the idea and you have the competences, but what are the next steps to bring the application forward and done? So and what we did here was uh, to split it to focus, to make more space um, in the residential training for uh, learning some competences uh, to interact, uh, to have uh, communication competences, to have project management competences, to learn and practice these things. And the last part, like the step from the idea to kind of uh, defining your project, writing a concept and um, a, an, an application, we put into an online course, yeah? So we had a group who was already together for four or five days. And after this, they entered this course and they take off, it's, it's, it's only in Polish, yeah? So that's just kind of, uh, so I'm a bit so, so, sorry for this, but it's, uh, this is really the kid could get the go then like uh, step for step with also their, their local partners or, um, if there was one person only in the training course, then they could involve also the whole whole local group of young young people to to do this course and uh, and get the application um, done in the end. Yeah, so that's that's maybe another example how to organize maybe uh, residential and online together. And yeah, that's it. Each module, there's one practical activity, which is inviting the learners to interact with their local contact. So we ask them every time to take something from the course. Let's say kind of um, a method they used, how to define goals, to go in their project, to take their volunteer, put it into practice, make an experience, come back with the reflections about the experience and share the reflections about this experience uh, with the learning community here. So this is this is something what what we wanted to have. This is a kind of as a little bit of a balance that you have not only kind of uh, the cognitive level of learning and uh, reflections on the content, but also to try out something something practical and come back with the experiences and train and, sh and share it share it here. So that's one course. Um, any questions about this one? Uh, just just a quick uh, comment. It's, it's quite uh, enlightening to see um, what you say about the levels of participation. And um, also, this is something that I'm sure we all know uh, that can happen in offline courses that, you know, some participants are more engaged than others. However, in, in my own experience, um, it can be sometimes the most rewarding aspect of facilitating a course is where you can get a participant and really uh, engage them and make them excited about the topic and make them go beyond themselves through additional mentoring or adapting your strategy according to ac accordingly uh, this is what makes it really rewarding to be a training yeah. and is it like can this translate into the online realm or 
are there any strategies or is this something that the that is that is going missing in the online online <clears throat> it's messing up the online structure mm. because the online structure you would also you would like to prepare it you would like to have it neat neat and and tiny and to kind of nicely illustrated which takes a lot of time all this kind of circling of kind of you creating some content you're going through the storages of proofreading you're putting it online you're developing illustrations for it it takes a lot of time yeah it's not something you can you can do right now but maybe maybe the uh, this discourse is a little bit uh, a better example for this because this is kind of uh, the course is is more like a, it's a work in pro process and uh, and everything in this course is more like uh, rather self made um, but it comes also, if you would like to engage people a little bit more, it comes also with a price because you need an additional structure. Okay, you are chosen by me to be the me. <laughs> so uh, I will uh, share the screen where I will be showing uh, a bit what uh, kind of activities uh, I was involved uh, as trainer facilitator uh, i can tell honestly that since june i was involved in pretty several courses uh, to be designed and some of them they already finished or they had several editions uh, today i picked up to showcase uh, two courses which uh, one is appetizer course and the other one is uh, training for the members of eu for youth alumni network uh, my choice was due to the fact that uh, appetizer course used to be an, a still a networking course, which means that it was implemented every year, several times a year as a residential course. And then as a team, we thought, all right, how we can transform that residential course into online course. And uh, until now, we had uh, two editions of uh, this course. Uh, giving quite an interesting perspective to work on a course which then it is repeated and then we accumulate some experience and uh, uh, material so that that's one of the reasons I picked up plus in this course we uh, implemented uh, two groups using the same course material so that's something what I would like to showcase as well so that's appetizer and the second one, alumni, this uh, network of alumni, it's actually a network of ex-beneficiaries of uh, mobility programs, exchanges, uh, trainings, uh, Solidarity Corps. And this alumni network promotes uh, engagement with other young people in the communities locally in the region of uh, Eastern Partnership countries, which is uh, Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, uh, Ukraine, uh, Belarus, and Moldova. And what I was tasked to do by the network to design an online training program for uh, young people, because the network is composed of young people who have experience of being involved in international mobilities. And then I decided to propose to host also parts of the activities on Hop platform in combination with a, a series of webinars. So these two I selected. Uh, at any moment, you can also post questions and I will try to pick them up from the chat. So uh, use this option to ask or just unmute. We are small group. I, so... I have a question. Uh, yes. If uh, this uh, network, alumni network, it was, an, it was a course or is it just a platform to cooperate, to enable them to have a cooperation? Actually, this is an existing network which uh, worked uh, before a pandemic uh, as a network. They, they were formed and they had already local activities with young people. And that at some point due to pandemic, they, they, they were looking for expertise, how young people can be involved with other young people online through digital means. And that's how I entered. They asked me to design and deliver a training course and facilitate for these young people, members of the alumni network, how can they engage with other young people? Yeah, so oh, that okay. was so, the task. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it was the training course as well? So yes, it was a training okay. course. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So appetizer, uh, the way we transformed, we looked at the objectives of appetizer course and we needed to revise a little bit uh, what we offer as uh, a course, because uh, at some point uh, uh, 
we understood that we actually can offer even more things uh, in online because we could add a dimension of online uh, experiences. So everywhere to objectives we looked at, we added some dimension for, for example, digital tool and media, or uh, they can use uh, live experiences, but also online, yeah, how to facilitate online intercultural youth projects, yeah. So that was one of the things we started with. We really looked at how the course can be addressing what is important uh, for uh, people who are new to uh, international mobility. Uh, so we kept essential uh, elements of the course, but then we looked at how to deliver them through online. Um, we actually looked also which of the content parts could be delivered through Hop platform and which needs interaction. So we chose Zoom and Hop as combination. We favored Zoom for interactions mainly. Small inputs were needed, but mainly it was group work uh, uh, on different activities, topics uh, uh, related to the course objectives. And then Hop platform we decided to use for hosting the materials, resources, discussion forums, uh, and, and, and this was the uh, plan. What we did, we actually made a very detailed program, uh, if it will open, a detailed program of what will happen then, so that people could easier plan their schedule, because the course webinars activities were stretching through two, three weeks. We tested two weeks concept and three weeks concept, and we realized three weeks would be better because two weeks are too short to have five, uh, six webinars plus go through material on hop. And then uh, what was, uh, yeah, participants were uh, using this to track down where they are, what they need to do in terms of uh, course activities. So everything was involved in, included in this uh, activity program. Uh, yeah, the team and everything. Uh, we spent time really as a team to create resources needed for addressing different topics and objectives. So for example, some of the activities would be more facilitating interaction with uh, people. So we were inviting people to introduce themselves, uh, also using video to uh, record if they are comfortable or share more about the organization. Here you already can see two groups having different discussions. So they would onboard on the course with a special code and they would end up in specific group. So, and they can see only if they belong to the group. So that's important thing, yeah. We included and integrated uh, uh, Menti as one of the tools so people could respond and interact. And then later on, we were using this as material for uh, uh, reflections in the uh, Zoom webinars. So some parts we already incorporated from Hop to Zoom or vice versa. If we were delivering together the group, some outcomes of group work, we would usually find a place where to uh, put them. We had a special section learning to learn where we wanted people to really reflect on uh, uh, what does it mean to learn online. And we were picking up this in one of the webinars as well, spending time with group to reflect learning experiences and sharing. We also created a, a PDF uh, a booklet for uh, actually for helping people to uh, follow their learning. And it is uh, structured according to the activity program. So basically what we were doing, people could uh, respond as a question. And then we started to build uh, different uh, activities related to building a group. For example, one of the best still, and I use in, on different courses, digital detectives, where the idea is that people need to post a picture and give three hints about the picture and others need to guess what do they mean by selecting that picture. And it is one of the most active uh, forums uh, you will see on this course, but also elsewhere. And some people were saying, ah, you brought my envy for travel. So I want to travel a lot. Yeah, so that was kind of virtual travel. Uh, organizations bazaar and networking uh, was offered as a section as well, so people could post post uh, about this, about their organizations. In another one, we used a map, uh, which uh, looks like this, so people could post pad on Padlet map their ideas. And then intercultural learning and uh, non-formal learning would be two main topics we were addressing, and here we would have a combination of videos, resources. For intercultural learning, we used a lot of movies. 
uh, also background information uh, about. And what else we did as part of the course delivery, we recorded some of the inputs or pre-recorded them and we had a budget uh, to have design and video production. So when we asked to support, we asked to include this one. So everything is now professionally kind of made. We were, we were as facilitators making this input, but actually it was uh, uh, then later on professional team working on this. And we find that very important if we want to have quality learning online, because uh, we want this look to look professional and to the point so that we don't have too much of raw material, lengthy material, but more uh, digestible one. I have a question uh, yes. uh, again, um, uh, that um, because I've been using uh, Google Classroom to, 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 to create uh, my online courses so far, and um, is it on Hop platform? Is it like the, some, I can see that it's the difference is that you can really integrate um, the links that they are already in, in the space, but is it like you also add some links. So for example, the maps that you have shown or the, the movies from YouTube, or there is also some, some possibility on the platform to, to I don't know, to, to create something. To record uh, directly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah where is the possibility to record, for example, make recording. And that's what we were inviting people to do. Then on discussion forum, they could simply click record and then from the computer, they would get camera and mic, and that's how they upload. That's possible. Uh, I, I think we chose to use more embedding because other tools have more interactive and appealing view sometimes. So that's why we chose. And then we can use them in different other instances. So for example, Menti results, I can show as independent ones, yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Great. this is an example of interviews. We pre-recorded interviews with organizations which have good practices to showcase. So that was also package we delivered as a team. So we identified that we lack good examples, well-recorded examples of uh, good practices of that that was about youth exchanges and that we have a, about all different mobilities. So that was uh, recorded and offered as uh, a result of the course. So this is, yeah, and one other thing what we, yeah, Moodle has and we integrated, it's using badges uh, because it's part of the uh, system uh, on Moodle. So we also uh, tailored badges to the modules and people could see where they are on the progress uh, in terms of uh, achievements. All right, I would like to turn to another course, which is uh, more uh, for youth leaders and I think in this one, I want to show that actually... Nerius, Nerius can I yeah, interrupt you? Please. <laughs> Sorry, it seems the chat doesn't work. Um, so I understand correctly that HOP is still the place where you store material, however it is organized along a timeline or in, in, let's say, in clusters, but interaction happens then somewhere else. So you would combine it with Zoom, is it correct? But I understood there's also minimum interaction possible on HOP, which would be nice to see what is the minimum interaction opportunities that you have there. Yeah, uh, in terms of interactions, uh, where are discussion forums, uh, which we use? So for example, uh, uh, we do a task with people that was, for example, we integrated online test about creativity for young people. It's a cool test, creative test. And then we ask people to share their outcomes. So that would be discussion forum, different types of formats existing. Then what I often use, it's uh, uh, when we need to send messages, we usually would use the notification system. So we can publish announcements. Uh, you can also send direct messages to course participants and they can send you back whenever they need. So these kind of interactions available. Uh, chat option is also possible. It's just that often we don't use it since our asynchronous is not um, meant to have. That's why we don't have it as a chat. I, I really use the chat, but also it would be possible to use chat if the group is staying, for example, full day on a training course. Yeah. So that's uh, possible to have it uh, integrated. And plus, there are more options where interaction, not necessarily bef between participants, but with the content you can create. So where are, for example, uh, possibility to use interactive uh, activity, which people need to fill in the gaps in the sentences, statements, and so on. And plus we use, we integrate different third party uh, tools, Mentimeter, other parts of uh, other tools, the Padlet, we use a lot of Padlets 
For example, uh, this is uh, where with young people in different countries, we ask people to think of uh, uh, what are the digital worlds of young people. So in each country group, they were working on a webinar. So webinar was the place when they started. And then we later embedded all the digital uh, padlets from all countries uh, on the uh, course environment so people could come back and continue interactions if needed, yeah? So that's uh, one of the examples uh, how we uh, go from webinars to, let's say, to environment. Yeah, uh, something what uh, I wanted also to say about, um, uh, yeah, for example, expectations would be one of the things what I, I like to include already on, uh, on the platform. So uh, we use it uh, as integrated uh, element, but also uh, later on, we can showcase it on webinar or vice versa. So that's, that's where you start jumping between uh, different uh, environments yeah. what we also do we a lot reuse material from now created materials so for example i know that we created something for digital mooc so then we in embed in another course the same now we use a lot uh, materials from uh, online other courses so that's uh, helping a little bit to uh, balance what we need to create and what we can use already uh, in terms of um, uh, resources. In this course, for example, we also looked at what the network members want to do practically. And then we were doing, for example, one thing, what they did, they interviewed other young people about their interest needs and uh, ideas for activities online. And then they were tasked in a way to create a one minute, minute video. And then people were posting uh, on the forum and later on, we had even a, a showcase of different uh, videos created uh, during one of the meetings of this course. So there are opportunities to engage in different ways. Uh, what we also did this course, for example, we didn't know the final schedule and final topics uh, of the entire course, but we build it as we go. So that mean, meant that we had weekly webinars, but we had one week to catch up the next activities. So uh, the final module, for example, was all about them learning more. What uh, was the learning journey before? What kind of things they are interested to learn more? And uh, that's how people were identifying further interests to learn. Yeah, so different uh, tasks uh, they were doing on uh, online and in webinars. So these two courses I wanted to showcase. Yeah, if you if you compare this to activities that you have done offline, the residential exchanges, uh, we, we asked that previously from Michael, but what is the level of completion? What is the level of involvement of uh, people to this course? Yeah. How did you manage that? Yeah, I think the way we ask, actually, it's not uh, so much. I mean, the level of engagement, we, we, we monitor a little bit through some criteria. If, for example, we look at all the five or six webinars we host and wherever people are turning up and that usually it's very serious reason why people don't show up, yeah? So on that part, I think I know more uh, about engagement than I have a group of uh, 30 people in the room and I don't know where they are mentally uh, with their thoughts and everything because they're just physically sitting, yeah? So for me, I cannot read minds. That's one thing. And I think we were looking at the progress in such a way that we offer opportunities to learn, we support and help when needed, but we don't oblige people to go through everything because that's again, it's not, it's against of non-formal education. And then we, uh, we were uh, using the same evaluation form as we used in residential. So we didn't change the questions. I mean, we kept, kept the same questions, just we added more, more, more extra questions about learning on hop and zoom. Yeah. But if I would look at the results without knowing from which course they would be very similar. And that's what we try to keep. We don't want to say that it's replacing, but at the same time, we don't want to lose the uh, chance to move and, and offer something online, yeah? But comparing, it's like we say comparing apple and uh, uh, pear, it's the same kind of fruit, but different taste, different shape from different two trees, but they are having vitamins, you know? 
So that's how I would put here. Yeah. Amr. Unmute, please. Yes, yeah. Uh, I'm, I was asking, uh, I wanted to ask about the videos uh, you used. Um, so the, yeah, the resources. So you made most of the videos for the courses, right? Is that a must for the hop platform or we can use external video resources, of course, assuming that we clear the copyrights? Yes, uh, actually it's not a must. Uh, hop doesn't have requirements. Uh, it just, it must be respecting copyright laws, of course. But for our course, we chose to record only videos which we couldn't find available because they are either non-existence or we needed them because of the course. But we also used external videos on different uh, activities uh, uh, to, to showcase. So it's, uh, it, it is a combination. In total, we produced, uh, I think, six short videos where we have inputs and uh, six or seven video interviews. So that was our production for this course. Yeah. But we also used around the same amount of different material from different other production. Uh, we knew that it's uh, useful. All right. So it is okay, Nerius, if we uh, relink materials from Solilla or from sharing perspectives. I mean, already published materials for online facilitating tasks. Is it online if we relink all these materials into a hub, uh, brand new uh, course? Yes, or... uh, yes, I think that's uh, uh, possible because again, the way I see learning online, my role now, it's not to give only unique uh, material, but also open up to existing material already. If it's available, accessible, open, uh, copyright allows. My task now is a lot directing people to more and how I can do much more in a precision way. Yeah, if something, a topic emerges in a discussion, I can search or find or offer maybe five resources and I embed it on hop, yeah? So yes, that's possible. <laughs> 